uh, what was I saying before? I don't even remember how I answered this question before. I thought I just answered that. Hey guys, it is me, Alana. Welcome back to my channel, The Awkward Book Nerd. For this video, I decided that I wanted to do a Q&A for you guys. So, last month in one of my vlogs, I mentioned that I hit 500 subscribers. And I am currently at almost 550 subscribers overall on my channel, which is super awesome. And I'm so like, grateful, especially because it's opened up a lot of opportunities for me in the past, like, month or two or so and so like I'm just like really excited about my growth and just about like the things that I get to do and just doing this so super excited um so yeah so I realized that I didn't do anything <laughs> to like celebrate really um I kind of just cried on my vlog when I like talked about it and I realized I was like I should do something else so that way I don't know, that's not the only thing I do. And I I do want to do a giveaway eventually. Maybe I'll do that when I reach 600 or 630 or 700 or something. Um, but for right now, the way, like, because I just recently started my job, I don't have the money yet to be able to, like, afford a giveaway. Um, but I will hopefully later in this year do one. I just don't know when. <laughs> but I figured a Q&A would be probably the best, uh thing I guess but I have a couple of questions from friends on Twitter so I'm just gonna go ahead and dive right in to these questions I will put the questions up here like over here so that way you guys can like read along with me and just see what I'm reading from and seeing who posts them and stuff like that so alrighty so first question I got was from Michelle um, from Michelle reads by a and she asks, what is your dream job and have you ever thought about writing a book? To be honest, I don't know if I've ever had a like set dream job. I know as I've grown up, I've had multiple dream jobs. Like when I was younger, <laughs> I wanted to be Britney Spears. I wanted to be a vet. I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a singer. So I like when I was younger, I just like transitioned between jobs a lot. Um, as I got older, I think I at one point I did want to, I think I, the doctor one stuck. Um, and then when I hit college, like, I wanted to do something with history, and then I realized I didn't really want to, like, the things that I could do with history, I didn't really want to do, like, teaching. I didn't want to teach or anything like that. So then um, I majored in psychology, and even then I still, like, just wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. I knew I wanted to help people, but I still wasn't sure, like, what, like, where I wanted to do that and, like, how I wanted to do that. Um, even now I'm still, like... I don't know <laughs> I just have ideas at one point I wanted to go into publishing I don't know if I wanted I don't think I want to do that anymore I'm kind of just up in the air honestly so I don't know if I had a set dream job right now um I do have a goal of going to med school and becoming a psychiatrist a child psychiatrist so that is I guess my current dream job okay and then have you ever thought about writing a book yes so when I was in middle school um, that's when I like my reading really picked up like I was reading more books than I had I liked to write stories so <laughs> the first story I think I ever writ I ever wrote was it wasn't fan fiction <laughs> I don't want to call it that but it was like this twilight continuation almost where Renesme was like like so like you know when you everybody's read twilight so like you know how like it starts when Bella's in high school and she like meets the Cullens so <laughs> My story started from Renesmee's point of view when she's starting high school in Forks and the Cullens like moved back because uh, <laughs> it was time, it had been long enough and they could just move back. And so it was Renesmee's first year in high school and so like they were like, like you know the scene in the cafeteria in the movie when they all walk in and like Jessica's like being all snarky about who they are and they had this like cool aura. Like I basically recreated that scene. And oh my gosh, yeah, it was just, it was cringy, but it was my story because Twilight was my favorite. I'm trying to think. I also, because of Twilight, I was in a vampire phase of my life. I don't know if I've ever gotten out of that phase, but I used to write a lot of stories about vampires. <laughs> They're very bad. I also wrote a story about uh, mythology that included mythology. Now, like, I have ideas, but... I don't really think it's my dream to be an author like 
maybe one day down the road if I ever learn how to like flush out an idea and stuff that would be cool but it's not like my end goal I, again like I have ideas about stories and I'll write them down on my, my computer and see like maybe one day I want to write them out or like flush them out or something but for right now I just am not in that place to want to like write a book <laughs> my next the next person it, who asked me questions was uh, Jessica from Jessica Nicole Dickerson. You should totally check out her channel because she is amazing. You should also check out Michelle's channel because they are both some of my favorite booktubers and I just love them so much. Um, yeah. Uh, Jessica's first question is, if you could only read audiobooks or digital books, which would you prefer? I think I would prefer digital. I just got into audiobooks and even then, like, they've only been the Harry Potter books. I haven't, like, read any other books yet audio book it, like audio wise I tend to rely more on digital books like I love physical books obviously like I have stacks over here and I would prefer those but it's not an option but also digital books are just a little bit easier for me because I can like take them around on my phone like wherever I am and like read them like if I'm like waiting in the office or something like that I can also read them at night when I'm like laying in bed and I don't have to worry about like holding the book like this and trying to like do that and I don't have to worry about having a light on because my phone has a screen and like all that kind of stuff so I think I would prefer digital Number two is, what is your favorite season? Okay, so my favorite season is summer, mostly because my birthday is in the summer, so a little narcissistic. But um, specifically in summer, my favorite seasons are that in-between of one when spring is slowly ending and summer is starting because it's like a nice in-between of uh, weather. So like, it's not too hot yet, but it's like not super cold like it was. So I like that in-between, but I also like the in-between of when summer is ending and then fall is beginning because it again like the heat is kind of dwindling down and then the trees are like a really pretty color and like breathe like the wind starts to like breeze out more and stuff like that so those are like kind of my specific specific favorites but just initially just summer is probably my favorite season overall her third question was, what is your favorite booktube video to watch? So I really like TBR videos. Um, I like making them and I like watching them, partially because I think I love being able to relate to people and see what they're reading and just be like, oh, I wanna read that next, or oh, I just read that kind of thing. But also, uh, I love planning out TBRs. I'm very bad at uh, following through with them sometimes, but I love like planning them out because I like being, like there's like an excitement to it. Like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna read this book next month finally. And oh my gosh, this, I'm like finally gonna be able to tell people I read this book and stuff like that. So I just really like it. I'm like, I like planning and I like making the lists and stuff like that. Sometimes I don't like following through with the plans and like <laughs> all that kind of stuff. But yeah, so to be our videos are probably my favorites uh, overall. The next person who asked me questions was Sarah from Novel Serendipity, who is amazing. You should totally check out her channel as well. She has some really cool Pokemon tags that everybody should do. I eventually want to do them. I'm just really behind on tag videos right now because I'm the worst, but you guys should totally check them out. First question she asks is, why haven't you read Trial by Fire yet? Oh, by the way, I am what I'm reading these on my computer. That's why I'm like looking down and back. I should have said that at the beginning, but I forgot. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I haven't read that book yet. To be honest, I don't own it, so that's partially why <laughs> I haven't read it. I'm, like, and I hate to admit that because I know she's going to yell at me, and I love you, but don't yell at me. <laughs> but also, I just, I haven't, I don't own it. I honestly don't really even know what it's about. I just know she talks about it a lot, so I, like, support her in talking about it, but then I'm like, I don't know what this book is about because I haven't looked it up, so am I, am I a failure at being a friend yet? Like, I swear I'm a much better friend than it seems, guys. <laughs> Okay, her next question is, do you know the Baby Shark song? I do know that song. Have you guys seen the video where the little girl is singing it to her mom? And it's, oh my gosh, it's so cute. I, it was like viral on Twitter. I don't even know how long ago, but it was the cutest thing ever. You guys should go look it up. I don't know. Yeah, you should just look it up. It's so cute. Okay, number three is, would you rather travel to Japan or South Korea? Well, that's a really tough choice. Mm. I'm gonna say South Korea because I actually lived in Japan when I was younger. Um, I don't remember too much from it, but I want to be fair. Since I'd already been to Japan, I should just go to South Korea. Number four is anime or drama. Ooh, that's a really tough one. I'm gonna say anime because I have more favorite animes than I do dramas because I started getting into animes earlier than I did dramas. I only got into drama because, um, <laughs> okay, so Sailor Moon is my, my all-time favorite anime because I grew up with it and um, it was like an anime me and my cousin who was like 10 years older than me bonded over and she used to like babysit me and we would watch that together. So that's like, I just like cool memories and stuff. So when I was in middle school and I discovered the internet and YouTube, um, 
I found that there was a live action Sailor Moon drama and I lost my mind. It wasn't the best. It was honestly very terrible and they changed the story of Sailor Moon like drastically. But that's how I like first got into drama. It was the first drama I ever watched. And then my second uh, drama that I ever watched was, so there's an anime called Itazura na Kiss and it's my absolute favorite anime because it's about this girl basically who's chasing after this guy who's very like cold and then he like slowly falls in love with her because she's just like kind of dumb and very clumsy and just kind of like wins him over with just who she is and there is so it is probably one of the only animes that has like multiple versions of drama so there's like a korean drama and a japanese drama and a taiwanese drama and a chinese drama like of this anime they're just like so many different versions of it that they've made because it's so good and um i think my favorite version is the taiwanese one but that was my second and i think that that drama specifically like the versions and just that anime like sucked me into the drama world because of like how good it was um, but yeah so i'm gonna say anime okay and the last question is best childhood memory Ooh, that's a hard one because i have a lot i'm gonna say like whenever i had family over like so when i was younger i lived in arizona and my mom's side of the family lived in california so my grandma and like my aunt and her my two cousins and a lot of the time they would drive down for the weekend because it's only like a five hour drive between my house and their house between like california arizona maybe a little bit more i can't remember specifics um so they would even drive down to us or we'd drive up to them but i loved it when they drove down to us because when i wasn't sitting in a car for a long time but also it was just like more fun i guess when they were like in my home turf and it was just always fun when they were staying with us because it just felt like a party all the time because like we would always be going to do something or they would always be like entertaining me because I was like an only child so I didn't have siblings so that was the only time really that my house felt like lively unless maybe I had friends over but I didn't really have friends over a lot of the time. Those were my favorite memories. Um, just like my cousins, especially with my cousins because like whenever we're together even when we're older now like my oldest cousin she's 10 years older than me and my second oldest cousin he's like a few years younger than her. I think he might be like eight years older than me but even now like whenever we're together we always just like have fun and my grandma always yells at us because she's like you guys need to grow up but we're like no like we just always like joke around and stuff and that's always like my favorite part because like we just never like take each other too seriously but like we're like we're always cool with each other and so this is just my favorite part um, the next person that asked me questions was sylvia from show filament who is amazing and they are doing a talk show series that is like new on their channel so you guys should go check out those episodes on her channel because they're actually really cool and she actually talks about really important topics on the booktube like channel like in the booktube community so i recommend those um first question is whose review styles do you like a lot <sighs> Ooh, that's a hard question i don't know I don't know if I pay attention to review styles as much. Um, I will say I do, I do like Sylvia's, the way she reviews things, because I like the fact that she has a set list of questions that she asks herself about the books. Um, I personally couldn't do that because I'm just, I don't, like, I'm not that structured in, like, the way I talk, and I don't like um, writing out, like, it just would feel like too much of, like, planning out what I'm going to say, and I don't like doing that. But I like the way she does that. I think Melta Annie does a good job with reviewing books. I like that she has, like, whenever you see her post on Instagram, um, you, or, like, maybe in her vlogs, you see her have, like, this notebook that she writes all of her book, her book thoughts in when she's reading and stuff. And I like that because, um, and it even, like, inspired me to kind of start doing that. Like, I don't do it with every thought I have about a book, but if it's, like, a moment or something that I feel like I should remember or that I have feelings about, I like to write them down. And so I like that she does that because it's, I feel like it helps helps you like r helps remind you of the things you're feeling throughout the book and in case you like forget or something like that so I like that she does that too. I think those are the only two. I don't really pay attention to review styles as much I guess. Not because I don't like pay attention to the reviews but just because you normally I'm just like oh this person like I it's more about the person than the review style I guess if that makes sense. Next question who has a similar reading taste as you? Oh goodness who does? Oh that's hard because I don't know. I will say I think the closest person I've come to like realizing they have this kind of the same reading taste is maybe Chloe from Brunette Movie Files and that's just because we both really like reading contemporaries and we have a lot of the same favorites in like contemporaries but also like it's not completely the same obviously either like there are some books she probably has read that I probably don't like and vice versa. I feel like maybe Michelle too like we kind of like the same contemporaries almost. The only thing is she doesn't really read fantasy and I give fantasy a chance Though it's not always my favorite, I do give it a chance, so there's that. So, like, it's it's diff it's interesting, because I don't think there's a set person that I found that has, like, the same reading tastes as me, weirdly enough. I could say Teresa, but, like, again, it's with her, it's a little different, too, so... 
I don't know if I have a set answer for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, last question. What were the last YA contemporaries you read and loved? I just read On the Come Up by Andy Thomas. I really, really liked that. Um, it's very different from The Hate You Give in regards to like topics, so don't expect the same thing going in, but I liked it a lot still. Like, and I love her writing style anyway, so I thought it was pretty good. Um, the next, second book, which is like completely opposite of On the Come Up, is Prince Charming by Rachel Hawkins. I recently read that this summer and I loved it so much because it was so funny. Both books were really, really funny um, in regards to just like characters and sense of humor and jokes and stuff like that. Uh, but I just really, really enjoyed uh, like Rachel Hawkins writing in Prince Charming as well. And I want to read the companion novel eventually. So, yeah. All right, next person, Courtney from At Court the Bun. I can't remember her channel name right now. I'm so sorry. I'll put it somewhere on here. Um, what bookish world would could you live in? Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I would probably live in a contemporary world because your girl would not survive a fantasy. I think I was talking about something recently where someone was like, would you, or would you survive a zombie apocalypse? And I was like, no, you might as well just sacrifice me first because I'm gonna go out, like, I'm just gonna set you guys behind, I'm gonna slow you down, might as well just kill me and let me get eaten by the zombies. So definitely contemporary. Um, I don't know if there's a specific world I could live in. Okay, I will say with a fantasy world, probably Harry Potter, just because I would want to be a wizard, and I want I would want Luna Lovegood to be my best friend. I would, I don't want to say I would make it happen because obviously consent and she like obviously has a choice, but I would make sure she loves me because I want her to be my best friend, and I really want a wand, and I want to like get a unicorn. Yes, just Harry Potter, but contemporary wise, I think I would have to go with. Uh, I think I would go with uh, Gallagher Girls. The Gallagher Girl series, that world, because how cool would it would to be like a spy and to go to spy school and stuff like that? I would totally do that too. I'd be a very bad spy, like very bad, but I could make it happen. <laughs> Next question: One place you want to travel to, real or fantasy? Um, obviously Hogwarts. I feel like that's like the typical answer people give, and it's the answer that is super good. I love that answer. Um, real wise, ooh, one place I want to travel. I think I would want to go to Paris again. I, I went when I was in high school and it was so pretty. All right, so next person that asked me questions was Amber from Amber in Oface. Her first question is, what are some of your bookish buzzwords? So I had to ask her what buzzwords were because I kind of knew what they were, but I wasn't sure. Um, and so they're basically words that get me excited about a book. So I had to think about this, but I think mine is usually like one, romance. That's all you had to say. As long as there's a romance, I'll read it because I like books with romance. And hmm, siblings is a good one if it's like about siblings and then there's still a romance. Not romance between the siblings, but like just one of the siblings has romance or something. Then that's a good one too. Um, I'm trying to think. Maybe like recently I've been really getting into like royalty books. So like Four Dead Queens, Prince Charming, Truly Madly Royally. So like I. Like, I have been just reading them and really enjoying them. So I would say maybe, like, prince or princess or, like, queen or king or something like that would probably be a buzzword for me right now. Um, some type of magical creature, like dragons, unicorns. I don't know. I think those would probably be it for me. Uh, I don't like books about fairies. So I'm not a big fan of Holly Black at all. Like, just her content. I just, I think pe the way fairies are written in any type of book. Like, I've tested it out and read, like, multiple books that just have had fairies as, like, so, like the main subjects and I just don't like them. I think those are my main buzzwords. There are probably more but I just can't think of any. The next question is are you a coffee person? If so, how do you take it? I am not a coffee person. I really do not like coffee. It's too bitter for me. The only time I'll ever drink coffee is if I really really need a wake-up call. Like I don't know why I did this but I stayed up really late one night right before I had to go to work last year and uh, I was so tired that I needed to order a white mocha and I had them put a shot in, but I was like, cut, like put in extra white mocha so I don't have to taste it because I really don't like the taste of it. But that's the only time I'll ever really drink like a coffee or espresso. It's just like when I need like to be awake. All right, last question from her is what is your favorite dessert? Ooh, I think that would have to be cake. Like I like just any type of cake mostly. All right, next person is at Celebrity Reads. How would you describe your booktube journey so far in one or two words? First word would be weird. Second word would be welcoming. Next question, a character you think should have been the main character instead of a villain. Ooh, that's a tough question. Let me think on this. Character that should have been a main character instead of a villain. I don't know if I, I read books with that, like read too many books with villains in it. Okay, so I do have an, an answer. So 
one of us is lying it's basically described as the breakfast club but with murder the main villain i'm not gonna spoil it and say who it is you find out at the end who it is i would have liked to like learn more about their personality and why they did the things the way they did <laughs> but i just it would have been interesting to see like more of who they were i guess um and just this is just from like my memory so i could that could have already been a thing and i just don't remember it but i feel like we just didn't really like we knew about them and we learned about them but not like i feel like we could have i felt i wish we could have gotten in maybe deeper if for lack of better words about them next is uh love triangles question mark i don't like love triangles i i hate having options like that like oh she could like this guy or like this guy or he could like this person or this person or whatever i hate that because i always end up falling for one of the love interests and they choose the other and i get so mad because i'm like this person is so much better and you're not choosing them why so like though actually it's it's like 50 50 sometimes they'll choose the person i love but sometimes they won't so like I'm pretty sure in Throne of Glass, the person that I like right now for her is not the person she's gonna end up with. And that's making me honestly hesitate to read the series because I'm like, why? what happens to the person? Like, why? Twilight, she ended up with what I wanted. Um, I'm trying to think of other love triangles. Uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of love triangles here because I choose not to read them. I just think it, it gets annoying after a while especially when they like keep going between them because then I'm like okay really you gotta choose one you can't just have both of them like coming like coming for you or like you can't just like tell one of them you like them and the other you like them like yeah you can like both of them but you gotta choose one <laughs> I mean technically if you really want to get like interesting and different you don't have to choose but in this book I know you're gonna have to choose one so I need you to do it now because yeah it's just not my thing I just and then someone gets hurt and then you just feel you don't like you didn't even do the choosing and sometimes you just feel guilty okay best trope in a romance novel I like it when they do friends to lovers I personally like that because you already have that built-in like relationship so you like know them and then like you just like w once you like cross over that line you just like know them on a different level so I really like that trope what is the meaning of your name I have no idea I'm gonna google Okay, so I just looked up my name on Google, and I don't know if this is like every meaning of my name. I just don't know. I just picked up the first thing I saw. It says that the Irish meaning of my name is beautiful or dear child. So that's cool. So next person, Chloe from Brunette Bibifile asked me, how do you, how much do you miss me and when can we finish our Mulan rewatch? Um, I miss you tons. I'm so excited for Booknet Fest to see you there. Uh, and we can do our rewatch either at Booknet Fest or at Y'all Fest, whichever one we have more time to do it at. Per next person is Sparkles and Magic. What's your motto in life? I don't know if I necessarily have a motto. Uh, I think mostly I'm just like, don't freak out <laughs> or like don't spaz or don't be awkward. <laughs> I think that's like my most thing, the thing that I say most to myself. Um, but I don't know if I have like a specific life motto, essentially. Next person, uh, Lori Dawson asked, if you were a superhero, what powers would you have? I think I would want to either read minds or read emotions. Or transport to like one place. Like I have the ability to transport between places because that would be cool without having to take a plane because I have plane anxiety. So that would be nice. Last question is uh, from at Cat Snark. Thoughts on tropes? Um, I like tropes. I think they are like good because like people know what they like and they know what books to pick up like that have those tropes and like they know that if these books have these tropes they're gonna like them and stuff like that. So I think they're pretty good for the most part. Um, I don't know if I have specific specific tropes that I like super love. I don't know if I have a lot of them uh, but I don't have a problem with them. Well, like sure there are like cliche tropes but like if people find enjoyment out of them like who am I gonna say that's wrong or like that's bad or anything like that. Um, what are some of your favorites? Again, romance, uh, or not romance, I was thinking of, of, of <laughs> I was thinking of buzzwords. Oh, friends to, like, friends to lovers. Um, I love, like, squad books, like, trophy squad books. I really, really enjoy those. Um, just because I love, because it's like they have, like, a little family and they're all friends and it's cool. I love, I love books that have that. 
another trope that I figured out I loved. This is more in dramas though than books, but I've seen it happen in a certain a couple of books and like dramas are the reason why I found out I loved it. It's when so like when you have like maybe like a squad of people and like so like there's in that squad there's like a romance between two of the characters. I love it when like maybe some of the other characters or just like two more of the characters fall in love too because then it's like oh my gosh you guys can like form like a squad like couple thing like if that makes sense like I love it when like not just the one character that you're reading about fall like gets like a romance the other character gets it too like the, like their best friend or something I just like love that because I just I like like normally I don't mind it if like maybe the other characters don't get a romance and then it's like it's over but I like it when like everybody can like find a romance or like find the film enter happiness in the story as well so I think that's like one of my big ones yeah that was my last question um this video is already super long so it's gonna be heel to eat it but I am grateful to everybody who asked me a question thank you guys so much I didn't know if this was gonna flop or not to be honest when I typed it out I Hope you guys like this video. Uh, if you, I guess if you have any more questions for me, just comment them in the comments before and out, below and I'll answer them. Um, if you guys like the video, go ahead and like it down below. If you guys have any comments on any of my answers, go ahead and comment them down below. If you are not good at leaving comments, I'm gonna steal an idea from my friend Sylvia from Wish Fulfillment and I'm gonna say go ahead and leave me an emoji down below. I just like to know you guys are here and present and interacting with me. It honestly makes my day when people comment or just leave an emoji. Or just like it makes me realize that people are watching my videos <laughs> and if you guys want to see more videos from me please subscribe down below you guys are awesome followers and a world full of weeds